Yesterday, Cristiano Ronaldo made the world turn its attention to him after announcing this would be his last European Championship. CR7 truly had one of the most remarkable matches to life. Despite facing Slovenia, a team not considered too strong in the round of 16, European champions needed a penalty shootout to secure their place in the quarterfinals. After regulation time and extra time, Portugal couldn't find the back of the net. With their star player, Cristiano Ronaldo, even missing a crucial penalty in the 105th minute, his shot was predicted and saved by Slovenian goalkeeper John Oblak. Fortunately for CR7, he was one of the three Portuguese players who successfully converted their penalties. More importantly, Portugal had Diogo Costa to thank for their victory. The Portuguese goalkeeper made history in the European Championship by becoming the first to save three consecutive penalties in a shootout. Not to mention, Diogo Costa had kept a clean sheet for the entire 120 minutes prior. Typically, given Ronaldo's influence, many media outlets would focus on CR7 and his last European Championship or his performance in the recent match. BBC, a national broadcaster, was no exception. However, their way of poking fun at Ronaldo has angered fans worldwide and sparked a wave of boycott. While the Portuguese captain missed his penalty, he broke down in tears and needed his teammates' support to regain his composure. Meanwhile, the BBC made a tasteless joke about the Al Nasser forward during halftime. As Gary Linker, Alan Shearer, Micah Richards, and Jose Fonte were analyzing the penalty situation, a yellow box appeared in the bottom left corner of the screen. The text inside was what caused the outrage. Instead of simply displaying Cristiano Ronaldo as usual, they boldly wrote, Cristiano Pinaldo. Play on words combining CR7's name with his penalty miss. This was a derogatory way of mocking CR7 and his missed penalty in the match. It might have been funny coming from an individual, but the BBC is the world's oldest national broadcaster and the largest media organization globally by employee count. With such scale and reach, they are not allowed to make such mistakes and should always err on the side of caution. Fans were shocked that such a large channel would make such a move. Some called it disgraceful. Another stated that they, they couldn't be convinced that it wasn't a troll account. Others pointed out the hypocrisy of discussing men's mental health while mocking Ronaldo for showing emotion during a crucial moment. Then the BBC mocked him for it. That's really a vegetarian wave. Ronaldo's fans stormed BBC Sports' Instagram to call on everyone to report and unfollow them. Even though it was a clip that had nothing to do with Ronaldo. Many videos on BBC Sports' Instagram feature star Will Burden playing on the beach. The same thing happens in other posts. Reported. Really a big disrespect. One person left a comment, Ronaldo is bigger than all your channels. One person punches and rubs. Because Ronaldo has 633 million followers on Instagram, while BBC News, the most followed account of the national media on this platform only has 27.7 million. The worst sports account in history, another person commented. Of course, there are still those who are interested in this mockery of the BBC. BBC captioned Mistiano Pinaldo based on his pen, what a masterpiece. Another person wrote, I laughed to tears. One person left in the comment section. Obviously, when a big channel touches a person of great influence, it's like digging your own grave. Cristiano Ronaldo is not just a simple player, but the power on the media is also extremely terrible. Remember, like three years ago, in the press conference before the match rematch with Hungary, Cristiano Ronaldo brushed aside the bottles of soft drinks of sponsor Coca-Cola aside. Then, CR7 lifted the bottle of filtered water that had been prepared on the table and said, drink filtered water. His action, which lasted only a few seconds, caused Coca-Cola to lose $4 billion. Accordingly, Coca-Cola's share price quickly dropped from 5.6 down to 55 as 22 cents. At one point in the day, 1.6% of the company's value was wiped out. Although there was a slight recovery to $55.44, equivalent to £39.38 after calculating this beverage company suffered a loss of up to $4 billion USD after CR7's action. So, just an unintentional act of Ronaldo had such a strong impact, and here it is because the BBC painted itself. It also made former England and Chelsea captain John Terry feel outraged. He shared on his personal status with a serious status.
BBC, this is a disgrace, along with him taking a screenshot of the clip in question. I think John Terry clearly empathizes with Ronaldo more than anyone, because he himself fell into the same situation. Bought out 2007-2008, Chelsea entered the Champions League final and met CR7's Man U D. In that first leg, the Portuguese superstar played extremely well, directly scored a goal, but the final result still had to be thanks to the dose of bravery. However, the player of the year himself, Golden Pipe Section, had a situation where he missed the 11E mark. He could have been the culprit that year, but that role belonged to John Terry. Chelsea's idea had a chance to finish in the fifth leg, but had a very bad slip, indirectly causing the blue to not be able to win the elephant's trunk. Butace everyone knows about the British media, it has become a very sore moment with John Terry, a shame that haunted him later on Ronaldo also fell into a similar situation before the match against Slovenia for a while but luckily for him Diego Costa made a zav. Besides we have witnessed influencers expressing their displeasure. Zai San a person with many years of experience in the professional so shared the status line on X with surprise at this penalty from the BBC who wrote in seven years of journalism, I have never seen such a disastrous broadcast. Where was this when Ken missed the match against France, or when Messi missed the penalty in the match against Chile? The hat red and related stories need to stop, expect an apology and compensation for this discrimination by BBC Sport. This is not the first time the BBC has been involved in football-related troubles. For a long time, 20 years ago, there was a famous figure who took the lead in boycotting the BBC. It was the legendary captain of Man UT, Sir Alex Ferguson. Especially when everything originated from the documentary, Feiji and Chant broadcast in which on Jason the Ferguson Sir television Alex's channel is said to have business dealings between the club and non-smooth agents. In the documentary, reporter Alex Miller revealed that many of Man UT's first team players were signed up by his son's management company Elite and alleged that Ferguson encouraged young players to sign up with his son. The day before the documentary aired, the club announced that they would cut off all relations with Elite following an internal investigation into plastic transfers. The then head of football at BBC Sport Niall Sloan tried to fix things so he could talk to Sir Alex Ferguson but no avail. The BBC is even said to have written to the League Managers Association to ask them to intervene, but the organization replied that they could not do anything. The story lasted seven years before Sir Alex announced he would no longer boycott in 2011. The event the BBC has been caught up in scandals besides football. The British broadcaster faced a crisis of confidence back in 2070 after being pressured to publish the salaries of its highest paid employees. In figures released in July 2017, two thirds of BBC staff earning more than 115,000 a year, the equivalent of 2,000, 3,000 were men. A few days later on her personal blog, the editor-in-chief of the China branch Carrie Grace resigned to protest the clear pay gap and female employees at the BBC event thought they doth the same job. Miss Gracie's decision received strong support from more than 103 journalists belonging to the group of female BBC employees. This is also considered a strong impetus for the struggle for equal R. Right, so that the role of women in work is fairly evaluated with their male colleagues. Still just one of the few stories related to the BBC's working practices and media handling. Not sure if it's because it's from the UK, where the media is known to be quite harsh and ready to mercilessly criticize anyone in various ways just to get attention. Cristiano Ronaldo may not have delivered a performance as desired in the clash against Slovenia, but for now CR7 and his teammates still have an important match ahead in the quarterfinals against France hopefully that. The Portuguese superstar will have a memorable tournament, ultimately meaningful, as well as our response to BBC's doubts. See you in the next videos.